Hi there everyone. In this video we're going to look at setting up your brand new 3D printed RCTA recoil unit. Okay, so I just want to run through um, how to set one of these up. It's fairly simple um, and um, the process will be pretty much the same for all the different variants that there will be. Okay, first of all you've got your main part. Um, so this is the part A. This is your main part. Of course when you print it out uh, I suggest that you put in some um, supports and then you'll need to file and smooth out these uh, running grooves here and, and maybe a bit in the barrel. Uh, depends on how you know good your printer is. Once you've got that part, okay, you should also print out the recoil block, which is this little unit here. Now this little unit slots into, into there. Okay, and it slides up and down. So once you've printed that out, put it in and uh, make sure there's nice smooth movement through those grooves. I um, have been using graphite powder, that's been working fairly well. And the other thing you'll need to decide what you're doing is if you are going to use uh, a servo for elevation, then you print out the servo elevation servo slide. And that's just this little piece here, and that fits onto the little groove in the main part here, and you just glue that on with some super glue. If you are using the elevation server, we'll come back to that um, again in detail later. It's meant to fit a four millimeter ball, and you see there's a, a round hole there. You pop the ball in there, and then it just slides up. So you have a nice, so it can't come out, so it can't slip off, um, and the movement up and down there. All the fittings should be fairly easy. Well, they shouldn't be so super easy to remove because um, you don't want it coming out all the time. I'm trying to outmove it from the other end. Okay. The other thing you might need to, to print off are servo arms. Now, if you can see this servo I've attached here already, um, I kind of like to use these servos. These are D65 servos from Power HD. Um, that's what it looks like there. They're fairly cheap servos. They're digital servos. Uh, but the reason why I particularly like this servo is because it comes with a nice long servo arm, which I obviously cut one half off. Okay, now, why that servo, the length of that servo arm is important is to get the best recoil action you, that you can, you want to try and get the pivot point in the center, so in line with the center of the gun. Short servo arm will come to just there, and you can see if it was just there, it'll be off center. But these longer servo arms means that the majority of your movement is going to be down the center of the barrel. I know there's uh, people have been using gears, and you've got a gear set up for linear motion. That's great. Um, but you know, I wanted a, a simple design and more importantly a design that's flexible. With a gear system you're pretty much stuck with um, the, the, the degree of movement so you need to program your radio if you want to vary the amount of recoils. Not every tank has the same amount of recoil distance because obviously they've got different guns. Using a geared system your, your, uh, the only way you can change that is, is via your radio. So if you're plugging into a system that has a, a predetermined program for servo recoil, which pretty much most of them are, uh, then you will have an unrealistic recoil length for, for some of your models. So if you have a system like this, you can vary the pivot point, the length of these arms and so forth, to get the right amount of recoil travel. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to be splitting this video up into um, a number of parts so videos won't run too long. But So let's um, get back into it. Okay, so you've printed your part, attach your servo. If you don't have a DS65 with these long servo arms, print yourself out one of these 2.5 millimeter servo arms. All the fittings here use 4 millimeter balls, but and, you know so if you're using my stuff, then you know you have to get some four meter millimeter ball studs, which I hope they'll have in the shop shortly. Print out some links, and the beauty of these is they just snap on to your to your ball 
so there we go there we have our system there okay and easy to come off again so we've set that up next thing we need to do is look at our barrel this I think is from tank model barrel uh, you will need to probably extend the barrel somehow so it gets into this part of the tank unless you've got a, a, a barrel already set up for recoil I like to extend it using a nine millimeter diameter aluminium pipe at the end there it just makes it easier for you to get your wires through and also be if you use a nine millimeter aluminium tube you'll be able to get your flash unit up the barrel so extend your barrel okay next thing we do uh, I guess well there's a number of things we can do we this is set up for the Panzer 3 now I'll have various units set up for the various tanks but this one's a Panzer 3 unit so it's got this attachment on it and that will just obviously slots there into your your Panzer 3 mantlet now I'm going to pause the video here I'm going to tighten it up and um, we'll go on to the next step okay welcome back what I've done I've just attached the mantlet onto the front of the you recall unit through the little screw holes there I've slid the barrel in and I've also put on the recoil block okay now <clears throat> what I suggest that you if that you do is you get yourself a servo test or you I guess you can connect it to your radio now in this position the servo needs to move uh, clockwise as you can see clockwise that way um, when, when viewed from this position of course um, to affect the recoil movement so that means you'll need to have your servo set to uh, minus 100%, 100%, minus 100%. I know this is saying 100 and that's plus, plus 100, but because remember 150, this is using the actual timings. Um, so you want your radio setting out the 100 US. So there we go. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to attach our servo so the servo goes into the ready to fire position so you know where that position is so you see the servo move so that's where the servo will be when the tank's moving around when you fire okay it's going to come back as you see you move the situation back here and then we'll take it back to the ready to fire position at 100. now this is um, good because what we can use this now to do is set up where our I'm going to have to move that out of the road so I can get this thing passed. Okay, so we push our barrel all the way up. Now, set our servo to 100. Okay, now we have the distance we need between the servo arm and our recoil block. And of course, our recoil block can move. There is a little space here for a three millimeter grub screw. So if you just undo that a little, should allow you to slide up and down on the barrel there, your recoil block. So we need, oops, sorry about that. We need our recoil block up there. So it's a little bit, it's gone too far up. So you just adjust your recoil block to that position. Let's go up a little bit more. Uh, how embarrassing. It there we go, that's about right. Oh, I bumped it. Yeah, so there it'll do. So you could, once you've adjusted the right length for your recoil block, you can then just tighten down the grub screw. and attach your link arm. There we go. And so when we fire, you'll see you'll get, most of that jitter is from this cheap unit. So you'll get your, um, you can see your motion. Now, what you can do is you can measure or get from the internet wherever the amount of distance of recoil that you should 
travel. Okay, and then you slowly adjust your unit till you reach that point. So I'm going to say, say for, for example, that's all the amount of recoil that was available on this gun. So you'd write that number down because we would go to our radio and program that in. Anyway, so that's how we set that recoil up. You will also notice too that I have put on here the recoil slide and that is for when we attach, sorry, recoil slide, sorry, our elevation slide for when we attach our elevation unit. Okay, again, these are uh, sized for the different tanks. This is a, actually, a, I think this is a Panzer IV unit, um, which is why I'm not going to be using it other than for this demonstration. And that will go in there like so, and sits on the top of your tank and controls the elevation. So that's your basic, your setup. Uh, here's a one I have done earlier. Here's um, the Tuck Panzer. Uh, as you can see, we've got it all set up in there. And... The elevation servo is mounted in there with the slide and the arm. So uh, again, I will. Uh, this will be the end of this part of the video. Um, what I will do then is I'll go on now to looking at how to set that up so it can be controlled by your radio, and um, that will be the second part of this video. Thank you.